Good afternoon, biochemists. So today is the second part of our lipids series, and we're going to talk about steroids and eicosanoids. So steroids are a class of lipids with a fused ring structure. So we have three six-carbon rings and a single five-carbon ring. And we can subdivide steroids into three families. We have cholesterol, steroid hormones, and bile salts. Okay, so let's start with cholesterol. So cholesterol is synthesized in the liver, and it's going to be the most common steroid found in animals. It's not found in other organisms. It's going to act primarily as the precursor for all other steroids, and it's going to also be a minor component of our cell membranes, which adds rigidity to them. So I want you to look at the structure of cholesterol. So cholesterol is slightly amphipathic. Do you guys remember what that term means? So it means this molecule has both a hydrophobic part and a hydrophilic part. So the bulk of this molecule is hydrophobic. This is all carbons and hydrogens. So that means it's not going to be fully soluble in water because the only a small part of this molecule, the hydroxy group, can interact with water. So that means for us to transport cholesterol, it's got to be transported along with other lipids using lipoproteins, which we'll talk about in the next lecture. Okay, so our next group of steroids are bile salts. So bile salts are the potassium or sodium salts of steroid acids. So look at the structure right here. This is a bile salt. So we have our four fused rings that make up all steroids, and we have a sulfonic acid group attached to the end. So this has undergone a neutralization reaction, and we have formed the sodium salt version. So these are going to be synthesized in the liver and secreted for storage in the gallbladder. Then when we eat something that's high in fat, they're going to be secreted to the small intestine where they aid in digestion by forming emulsions with the fatty food that we just ate. So our last group of steroids are hormones. So a hormone is a class of signaling molecule that regulates the function of distant organs and tissues. So that means the area of the body that they are produced is different, is separate from the area of the body that they regulate. So that means they have to be transported via the circulatory system. And we can break down hormones into three major types. So we have steroid hormones, we have eicosanoids, and we have peptide hormones, which we're going to touch on when we get to our proteins chapter. So we can subdivide steroid hormones into two major classes. So we have corticosteroids, which are produced in the adrenal glands, and they're going to regulate things like stress response, immune response, inflammation, and metabolism. Our other main category are sex steroids, which are produced in the gonads, and they're going to interact with androgen and estrogen receptors to regulate sex-specific characteristics. So anything like breast development, voice deepness, menstruation, or facial hair. Okay, so how do we produce steroid hormones? So this is a figure I'm going to give you on your next exam. You don't need to memorize it. You just need to know how to utilize it and answer questions based off of it. So what kind of questions could I ask you? So what is the precursor for all steroid hormones? So all the molecules on this graphic are steroid hormones, and they all start with cholesterol. You can trace every one of these molecules back to cholesterol. So let's try another type of question. So how many enzymes are required to convert cholesterol into aldosterone? So first thing you need to do is pause this video and see if you can find cholesterol and aldosterone. Okay, so let's start with cholesterol. And we're going to follow a series of enzymatic reactions until we get to aldosterone. So our first reaction is catalyzed by the cholesterol side chain cleavage enzyme. Our next reaction is catalyzed by 3-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. The next one is catalyzed by 21-hydroxylase. The next reaction is catalyzed by 11-beta-hydroxylase. And finally, aldosterone synthase catalyzes the last reaction, and we end up with a fully functioning aldosterone. So let's count how many enzymes that took. So we had one, two, three, four, five enzymes. 
Okay, I could also ask you a question about enzyme function. So what is the function of 3-beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase? Well, a lot of hints are in the name, and you can also figure it out by looking at the reactant and the product for all four of the reactions catalyzed by this enzyme. So on all four of these, we have a hydroxy group at position three that's being oxidized into a ketone. So if you get a question like this on the exam, you would tell me that the function of 3-beta HSD is to oxidize the hydroxy group at position three to a ketone. Okay, so let's talk about eicosanoids. So eicosanoids are hormone-like molecules derived from arachidonic acid and other essential 20-carbon fatty acids. So remember we talked about the definition of hormone earlier as a class of signaling molecules that regulate the function of distant organs and tissues. So we refer to eicosanoids as hormone-like because they're produced locally. So what do I mean by essential? So this is referring to nutrients that are essential in the diet because they cannot be produced in the body. So we're gonna look at three different classes of eicosanoids. We're gonna look at prostaglandins, thromboxins, and leukotrienes. Okay, so let's start with prostaglandins. So prostaglandins are eicosanoids with a five carbon ring, and these are found in almost every tissue in animals. So they're gonna primarily function as vasodilators, which widen blood vessels. This is going to inhibit aggregation of platelets and it's going to induce inflammation. So our next group of eicosanoids are thromboxins. So thromboxins are eicosanoids with a cyclic ether. And they're gonna function primarily as vasoconstrictors. So they're going to narrow blood vessels and this is going to induce platelet aggregation. So this is going to cause clotting. Okay, so our last group of eicosanoids are leukotrienes. So leukotrienes are eicosanoids with three conjugated double bonds, hence the name triene. So they're gonna primarily function to regulate inflammatory and allergic responses. So as you might guess, there's a problem when they're overproduced. They can lead to asthma attacks, and even some recent research has linked them to dementia.